What's up, Bluetooth hackers? Welcome to Hacker Warehouse TV Tradecraft. Today we'll show you how to use your Ubertooth hardware with the open source program Blue Hydra to build a powerful Bluetooth detection and tracking system all set up on a portable Raspberry Pi. This is a Tradecraft tutorial you won't want to miss. Here we go. The Raspberry Pi is an open source computer that puts a quad core 900 megahertz processor and one gig of RAM in the palm of your hand. Now if you don't have one, you should, and you'll need one for this tutorial. If you're not familiar with the Ubertooth, it's also a must-have piece of hardware for Bluetooth Classic and BLE sniffing, cracking, and overall device detection. Likewise, the open source program Blue Hydra was built as part of the Pony Express platform to provide a simple user interface for the real-time detection and logging of Bluetooth devices. So what we're going to show you is how to combine all three to detect all Bluetooth signals in a target area. So let's get started. This is a four-part system. We first need to set up our Raspberry Pi, then install Ubertooth, then install Blue Hydra, and finally run a little Python script called BLE Finder to detect and respond to targets. We'll take this project one step at a time, so let's walk through them together. You'll first need to acquire a Raspberry Pi. Now we use the Pi 2 Model B. To get the Pi set up, download the official Pi image from raspberrypi.org and burn it onto a microSD card using your image loading program of choice. This demo is running the Raspbian Jesse OS with Pixel. We downloaded the 4 gig Pixel ISO image and then burned the ISO onto an 8 gig microSD card using Odin on Windows. Once you have your Pi OS installed and booted up, we will next need to install the Ubertooth code and then Blue Hydra. Now there's a great procedure for this build already available on Lazaro.com and we use this as a starting point. Now, there were a few hiccups and we ended up making a modification to his app git command because Ubertooth is currently not in the Raspbian repo. Of course, this means we have to install Ubertooth manually before beginning his procedure. Thanks again to Lazaro for getting the ball rolling on this build. You can find a link to his procedure in the description below. To begin, we're going to install some compilers, share libraries, and Python. So we're going to run sudo app git. All right. Next, the Bluetooth baseband library libbtbb needs to be built for the Ubertooth tools to decode the Bluetooth packets. We'll get the code from the repo, compile, and install. Alright, wget. Alright. Once that's complete, we'll obtain the Ubertooth package from GitHub and build it as well. Alright. Ubertooth should now be installed. Just plug the Ubertooth in a USB and try reconnecting to it. Then retrieve the hardware version. Once we see the version, let's next ensure we can pull up the Spectrum Analyzer. You should now see a graphical Spectrum Analyzer. If so, then we know that Ubertooth is communicating properly and we're ready to install Blue Hydra. Installing Blue Hydra is fairly straightforward. First, we install the Bundler Ruby package, Bluetooth device resources, and then Blue Hydra itself. We've sped up the screen capture for the sake of this tutorial, as the process can take 15 to 20 minutes total. First, install the Bundler package for Ruby via gem. Run gem install Bundler. Next, we'll load the Bluetooth device resources required by Blue Hydra. We're going to run app git, copy that. All right. And finally, we'll install Blue Hydra from a GitHub repository. Git clone. That's going. Now that we've verified Ubertooth is working and we've installed Blue Hydra, let's jump over to the Blue Hydra folder and run it. Run dot slash bin slash Blue Hydra. If all is set up properly, well, then you should see Blue Hydra startup followed by a list of Bluetooth devices detected in your area. A common Raspberry Pi issue when using multiple peripherals can be fixed by using the appropriate amperage power supply. For example, you might experience issues when using a half amp power supply versus an appropriate two amp power supply. So just keep that in mind if issues crop up. Also, it's important to note that you cannot run Blue Hydra with the Ubertooth hardware alone. You'll need a traditional Bluetooth USB adapter like the Turnnet DBW106UB used for this demo. Blue Hydra uses the Ubertooth as a secondary piece of hardware. Now, the advantage of adding Ubertooth is that it allows Blue Hydra to detect classic Bluetooth devices in non-discoverable mode that the normal Bluetooth USB adapter can't see. With both Bluetooth adapters working in tandem, you're going to see all Bluetooth devices running in your target area. 
One of the great things about Blue Hydra is that it parses out the important information you need to know about a device and provides it in an easy to read list. If all is set up properly, you should now see a list like this one. Notice the RSSI column and that it changes with distance between your system and the Bluetooth device. Blue Hydra is constantly logging each device's Mac and RSSI in the Blue Hydra RSSI.log file. Now we created a Python script called BLE Finder, which monitors the Blue Hydra RSSI log file and alerts when certain MAC addresses are within range. The default alert is to display a message on screen and play a sound. In the real world, this translates to having a portable Bluetooth radar that detects and reacts when certain devices are in the area. You could modify the BLE Finder to say, alert you when the boss's smartwatch gets near your office, or set up the script to alert when your kid's phone leaves the house perimeter. One could also use the system in reverse to hunt down a specific Bluetooth device and track its location. Many devices will keep the same Bluetooth address forever and are easily tracked, while others will automatically change addresses to evade detection and increase privacy. No matter what the application, having a portable system that can be deployed to constantly monitor, detect, and log all Bluetooth devices in an area is a powerful tool of the trade that every professional can use. Well, that's it for this episode of Tradecraft. Tell us what you think and how you might use this system in the comments below. Once again, I'm Troy, thanks for watching, and from the guys here at Hacker Warehouse TV, let's keep it between the laws.